Well, welcome to another edition of Gone Again. In this video, we are going to do a review on this Joy Tutu CR50. It's a 53 quart, 12 volt compressor refrigerator. You know, a lot of these, or all of these, compressor refrigerators are pretty much alike in how they operate, what some of their idiosyncrasies are, what their power draw is per size and ambient temperature, of course. And we're going to talk about all that. We're going to talk about what you can expect from your 12 volt compressor refrigerator. Stick around. Yeah, it's that kind of day here in Montana. Yesterday was 71 degrees and we got the whole inside of the trailer repainted. <laughs> Today it's snowing. Well, it's as quiet as my other refrigerators. And uh, wattage wise, it's the same as the other refrigerators also. Running about, oh, averaging in my use about 13 watts per hour. Your mileage may vary on that depending on how warm a climate you live in. But anyways, we're taking it out on the road, see how it does. Well, we had it out for a couple of nights and um, first thing I can say is it is quiet. It didn't wake me up at all. <laughs> the lights are really bright on it though. Um, let me show you. These lights are really bright. Um, I don't mind the light inside being bright. This light on the outside is really bright, but what I do in the evening times is I just cover it with a towel or something or put a blanket on top here uh, so it covers that up. Otherwise, uh, it's really easy to read during the daytime. Inside, right now I've got it set on freezer. I had it set on minus four for a while and uh, it does go, when, you, when it says minus four, it is minus four inside. But at, this is a, ref, like, this is not a refrigerator section. It's just a section that doesn't get the cold directly. And if I've got minus four over in here, then this goes just below freezing on this side. And it, uh, and it does tend to freeze things. Like um, this bottle of water isn't totally for This has been in here for about three days now. So you can see uh, the bubble up on top. It's not totally frozen. But um, what I've done is raise this side up to zero from minus four. And now when I put read this side on the left here with my digital thermometer, this is now reading about 32 to 34. So that kind of works, you know, to have a, use this side as a freezer at zero degrees and this side being just above freezing. Now the way Linda and I usually travel is to have this whole thing just as a refrigerator set at 34 degrees. Now let's talk about um, how many watts it uses. As for how many watts, it's exactly the same as my other refrigerators. It, uh, in 70 degree, 70 degree ambient temperature on refrigerator mode at 34 degrees, it uses 13 watts per hour or it's about 288 watts per 24 hours. That's set at 34 degrees. Now, bumping it up to freezer mode, it used 720 watts for 24 hours. So it's more than double what it, what it does on um, refrigerator mode, so you need to keep that in mind. On, if you're gonna run it as a freezer, you're gonna need over 700 watts, between seven and 800 watts per day uh, between your battery and your solar or generator or whatever, whatever you're powering it with. So just remember that. Now, some people have mentioned uh, noise problems, uh, not with this refrigerator in particular, but just ref these refrigerators, these 12 volt compressor refrigerators. And what I've experienced is a noisy basket inside that starts to kind of buzzing or that uh, sometimes the baskets like this one has a, uh, a basket divider and that can buzz when the compressor is running and all you need to do is move something inside <laughs> and it'll stop that. Most of the refrigerator noise that I've experienced has been because of something buzzing on the inside. It just needs to be repositioned a little bit. Another thing that'll cause them to make noise and, and I actually witnessed this with one person, uh, they had installed their refrigerator in a cabinet. Now that's a no-no anyway, because it can't breathe. It can't get any ventilation, but it was inside a cabinet with the cabinet door shut. Big mistake to begin with. 
but the refrigerator was sitting right up against the plywood of the cabinet and it was uh, kind of humming on the cabinet, making it uh, a, a lot more noisy and all it needed to do was to be moved a little bit. And the third thing that'll cause your refrigerator to make noise, in my experience, if it's not sitting flat on the floor, it needs to be sitting down flat uh, so it's not uh, askew in any way. Speaking of sitting on the floor, I've got mine sitting on three very thick rubber pads. This is the kind of pad on the bottom here that you get to put in front of your sink so your uh, legs don't get tired, so you're standing on something really padded. This is about a one inch thick one. And this is a thick rubber doormat on top of that, real soft one. And then I've got a little packing crate foam sitting on top of that. That's to kind of pad this refrigerator here in the trailer where things get a little bouncy. Now, in case you're not aware, most all of these refrigerators now come with different settings to protect your battery, whatever battery you happen to be running off of. Uh, most of these come with three settings, a high, a medium, and a low. You'd set it on high if you're running off of a lead acid battery like the one in your car and you don't want to kill your car battery. Set it on high. If you're running it off of a um, deep cycle battery like what's on this trailer, you could set it on medium. And if you're running it off a lithium battery, you can set it on low. Now what that means is on high, it'll shut off at a, depending on the brand of refrigerator, it'll shut off at around uh, 12 to 12.2 volts, it'll stop so it protects your car battery. If you have it set on medium, like you got it on a deep cycle battery, that's, I'm pulling this off the top of my head, I should be looking at the manual, but it's more like 11, 11 and a half volts. And if you have it set on low, like it's for a lithium, running off a lithium battery, it'll shut off at around nine and a half volts, something like that. Now, um, this refrigerator has, uh, if you have it on in your house, and then you have a power outage in your house, when the power comes back on, this will automatically turn back on again. It remembers that it was on. So when the power comes back on, it goes back on. That's for when you have it plugged into the wall. With any of your refrigerators, remember they have to have proper ventilation. I'm in the habit of putting a blanket over this to uh, cover the lights and also to give it a little more um, insulation. But don't cover up these vents on the bottom this vent wraps around the side. I had a blanket fall down over it and I didn't know. In the middle of the night, I noticed it was running and running and running and running. <laughs> and I got up and took a look at it and the blanket had fallen down and blocked the vents. Not good. This unit's guaranteed for a year. Some of them are guaranteed uh, more like two years and others or two years with a five-year guarantee on the compressor. Like, like if it has a Dan Foss compressor, they, Dan Foss guarantees them for five years. Um, that's a good thing to have, to have the guarantee go so long. But that costs you quite a bit more money too. A refrigerator like that is close to twice what this one costs. You have to think about one thing though. In your house, how many times has the compressor gone out on your refrigerator? A, a refrigerator is the most dependable piece of machinery <laughs> that any of us own. We buy a refrigerator, we plug it in, and 20 years later, it's still going 24 hours a day. When it does go out, it's seldom the compressor. It's usually that it lost Freon or it lost refrigerant or that some of the electronics went bad. And my, my feeling is that with these 12 volt compressor refrigerators is that it's not likely to be the compressor that goes out. It's more likely to be the electronics that goes out. And even the refrigerators with the good compressors, the Dan Foss compressors, they have the same electronics. One thing you need to be careful of on this type of refrigerator, this one too, is the latch. Be careful how you open it and close it, because one thing I've read is these latches break. This is just a plastic piece that sticks up here, and if you slam the lid, this could end up breaking. In fact, I've seen some complaints, and it's not just this brand refrigerator either. Um, my Iceco has the same kind of uh, plastic catch on it, or this part of the latch breaks. I'm always careful. I always kind of close it like that you know, open it like that. And I don't slam it shut. I always kind of 
guide it shut like that. Something else you really need to give thought to when you get one of these is the cable that they come with. This is the 12 volt cigarette lighter cable. This is 12 feet long. This wire is a number 16. That's a pretty fine wire. And you're gonna get some voltage loss between your cigarette lighter and the refrigerator. My suggestion to you is to shorten this as, as short as you possibly can. Uh, like in this case here, I only needed like 30 inches. And I also hardwired this in. Now I didn't see anything in the warranty that, that would void, that, says, that said if I hardwired it, I would void the warranty. It shouldn't void the warranty. It's the same amount of electricity, whether it's hardwired or whether you've got it uh, um, plugged into uh, uh, the cigarette lighter plug. There's no fuse inside of here. The best efficiency, shorten this cable. If you don't know how to do it, take it down and have somebody do it. Figure out how long it needs to be and, and have it shortened. Now, one thing that some people don't seem to know is when you get a new refrigerator, even one for your house, you're supposed to let them sit for 12 hours to 24 hours before you turn them on. And that's to let the refrigerant settle back down into the pump. So you got to give it time to do that. Otherwise, you get uh, a bubble in the system and it'll make it gurgle and make noise and you don't want to do that. So when you get a new one, let it sit for a while. And it's a good idea to keep it as full as possible and that'll keep the temperature steady. If you have it nearly empty or empty, the temperature will be doing these swings like this. So that's not a good way to determine if it's holding temperature or not. Now, if you buy a refrigerator like this through Amazon, it's important that if you have a problem with it, you go back through Amazon. I've seen comments where people have had problems and they try to go back directly to the company and that's not the way it's done. When you buy through Amazon, you go through Amazon, they'll go directly back to the co company and they'll get the, the uh, outcome that you desire. So whatever you buy through Amazon, be it a refrigerator or a hairdryer, if you have a problem with it, you go back through Amazon to, uh, to get satisfaction. One problem that we've had with this that uh, bothers Linda more than it bothers me is it's hard to lift the basket out. There's a lip on this side that blocks it from being able to be lift, lifted out and you have to push it off to the side to clear that lip to get it out. So I can't lift it straight out. I have to lift it off to one side and then I can get it out. And even then it kind of catches on the way out. Which brings up another thing. We use it a lot without the basket to give us more space. But one thing the basket does is it creates air space and better circulation so things refrigerate more evenly. We'll get into doing some tests on this. It's, uh, it's a lot like the rest of them. It looks a lot like, they all tend to kind of look alike <laughs> these days. And this one comes with, just, just briefly here, we'll cover some of the things, because this is pretty common. This is the, the cord for plugging into your 12 volt accessory outlet in your car or your RV. And it comes with the 110 wall adapter. It has a basket inside. And the basket has a divider. Sometimes I use the basket, sometimes I don't. Inside you can see it's aluminum lined, which is great for transferring the cold temperature. And it's got two compartments. This one is um, a refrigerator compartment, although it's only got one coolant coil in it. But when this is freezing, this will stay at more like a refrigerator temperature on this side. So let's get to testing this thing out and having a look at it. Okay, this is what the 50 or 53 quart ISCO sounds like. I'm gonna put the microphone right with the camera here. Okay, here's the sound that the Joy Tutus makes. Same size refrigerator running on eco mode. Same distance to the camera and microphone. The level of the sound between the two refrigerators is the same. The Joy Tutus is a lower, uh, lower hum than the Iceco, but they both make about the same amount of, of sound. Right now I'm running a wattage draw test. This has been going for um, almost 11 hours now, and I'm right now and it's at 140 watts over 
total draw over 11 hours. We're going to let this go for 24 hours, but I can see right now that it's the same as the Alpacool that I have and the same as the Iceco. They're all the same size refrigerators and they're all drawing about 13 watts per hour. It's really efficient. So that's really good. Um, that doesn't mean anything really of, for yourself because your ambient te temperature may be higher or probably will be higher than ours here at about 70 degrees. But I was just comparing it to other refrigerators and uh, this is actually really good. So yeah, it's doing what it's supposed to do. So down here is the, uh, there's a, a 15 amp fuse. This is where your power connects. And this is that three position switch I was talking about to protect your battery. These handles are pretty stout and you can use it to tie down the refrigerator, but they feel pretty stout to me. And I think you'd be okay strapping this down to your pickup bed using these two handles, which are heavily spring loaded. So they suck back into the side like that. This does have a three second delay on it. When you first touch it, it tells you what it's set at. This is set at zero right now. And then it's a three second delay to actually change anything on it. I'm running it back up to about 31 degrees refrigerator mode. And now it'll hold that. It'll hold about 34 degrees on this particular unit. This is eco mode and max. And this is instant. There is no um, delay on the eco mode and max. I generally run it in eco mode just to conserve battery. On max, which is the white light here, it really cools down fast. About 20 minutes to go from room temperature down to below, down to right down to freezing. To turn it off and on, you have to hold it. Luckily, you can't turn it off and on by accident. Are you curious what's on the inside? Me too, I like to look. You should know how to do this because every once in a while you got to take this thing apart and clean it, you know. Get the dust off of the cooling fins. See, I talked about cleaning things. It's these fins here behind the fan that you're going to need to vacuum out somehow. Probably every couple years anyway. If you have a pet, you're probably going to need to do this every year. Okay, it's a one cool compressor. I'm going to go look that up right now. Okay, I did look up Juan Cool, and it's a, it's a Juan Bao Corporation. And then I was trying to find out how long they've been in business. I see that in 2006 and 2007, they won awards in China for being uh, China's most well-known brand. So they make medical freezers and commercial refrigeration and uh, all kinds of refrigeration. You can see on this side, it's got the one control module right here on the side of the compressor. And now we should talk about price. Uh, this is the 50 or 50 liter, 53 quart. It's the CR50. And as of right now, when the video is being posted, this is currently at $349.99, 350 bucks. Now that puts it at the low end of cost for these refrigerators. And something you need to think about is how much are you willing to spend? It seems to be that there's about three different levels for these 12 volt compressor refrigerators. This is the entry level cost wise. Then there's the ones in the middle that uh, have the Dan Foss compressor and things like that. They run like up in the five to $600 range. And then you go all the way up to the thousand dollar range. So you have to ask yourself, how long are those refrigerators going to last? And how is this long is this one going to last? Good, you know, that's just something you have to think about. So, I don't know. This one, I think, looks pretty good. Quality-wise, this one looks the same as the mid-range ones. In fact, they may even be made in the same factory. I don't know. The, the dimensions are different. There are slight differences, but a lot of things look a lot the same. So, I don't know about that. But quality-wise, it is the same as the mid-range ones. So, what are you giving up? It depends on uh, how long the compressor and the electronics last. And like I, like I said, I think the compressor isn't the part you need to worry about. It's more the electronics. I looked at the ratings for Joy Tutus on Amazon and they're like 99% positive. So that's all I can say about that. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope I gave you some information you can use not only for this refrigerator, but for all 12 volt compressor refrigerators. If you like the video, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you around.